I, I get the impression that investors no longer really believe that if Ben prints a ton of money, it will do the economy that much good. What do you say? Well, absolutely. The, the problem is the Fed has already printed too much money. You know, we're on the verge of QE3, and I predicted QE3 the day the Fed announced QE2 because I knew not only would QE2 not work, but it would actually make the problems worse. The problem is the Fed is trying to fight the market. The market wants to restore balance to the economy because of all the malinvestments that resulted from prior QE. But the Fed won't let the market heal itself. It keeps giving us more QE. It delays the pain, but it makes it worse. Okay, here's a political question. It's one that's being asked frequently over the last couple of weeks. Are we better off now than we were four years ago? What's your take on that? Well, look at the national debt clock. It just passed $16 trillion. We're over $5 trillion deeper in debt than we were four years ago. We've got nothing to show for it. How can we possibly be better off? In fact, we're so much worse off. Wait till the bills come due. Wait till we have to pay this money back. Wait till interest rates rise. We'll see exactly how much worse off we are because it's a lot worse than people think. While the economy appears to be on a path of moderate recovery, it isn't growing fast enough to make significant progress reducing the unemployment rate. With inflation anticipated to run at or below our 2% objectives, the committee has become convinced that further policy accommodation is warranted to strengthen the recovery and support the gains we've begun to see in housing and other sectors. Accordingly, the FOMC decided today on new actions, electing to expand its purchases of securities and extend its forward guidance regarding the federal funds rate. Specifically, the committee decided to purchase additional agency mortgage-backed securities, or MBS, at a pace of $40 billion per month. So when's the crunch come? Well, the crunch is going to come when foreign creditors no longer want to finance this spending binge, when the Fed and the government can no longer lie about how bad inflation is, when it gets so bad that there's upward pressure on interest rates, the Fed can no longer resist market forces, and then we're going to have our European moment, only it's going to be worse because we're in deeper debt than Europe, we're less able to pay, our economy is more screwed up, we need a big dose of free market capitalism. That's the only thing that's going to fix the problem. It's not going to be pain-free, but it will work. But the snake oil that Ben Bernanke and Obama are peddling will never work. I want a, t I want a time frame. When do creditors well, stop lending America money? I, give you know, me an idea. When Stuart, is it? This year, next I, I, year, when? Not, Stuart, I'm not that smart. If I could figure that out, I wouldn't be standing on a soapbox sweating under these lights. I, you know, I'd be out on my yacht in the Caribbean someplace. But I don't know exactly when it's going to happen, but I can warn about it in advance. I know it's going to happen. I do think it's going to happen soon. I mean, I'm surprised we've gone on this long. It just shows you how stupid the world is. But, you know, maybe a year or two and we have a currency crisis and a sovereign debt crisis. I can't see it going much longer than that. And I hope it doesn't go much longer than that, because the longer it takes for the crisis to hit, the worse it's going to be when it does. All right. Peter Schiff, always a pleasure. Thanks very much. Sir. We'll see you again soon. Well, the Fed is, has made, as we mentioned all day, huge moves, including plans to increase money printing indefinitely, open-ended, as they say. But will this have the desired effect of giving the economy a boost? Here with me now is Congressman Ron Paul in a first on Fox Business interview. Congressman, wonderful to see you again. Uh, David, thank very, you. Just very open-ended. What do you think of this open-ended <laughs> policy of the Fed? Well, it hasn't worked for four or five years now. It's not going to work this time, but you'd think Wall Street loves it. So I guess they think about economics differently than I do. That just creating new money is going to create wealth. But uh, does it restore confidence in the economy? It's, it's rather bizarre. But I think the point you made in your introductory statement is the fact that the dollar is weaker yeah. and gold goes up. It's a devaluation of the currency. And uh, one day we're going to wake up and realize that the economy hasn't recovered, so real wealth in those stocks uh, just isn't there. So, no, it hasn't worked yet, and it's not going to work. If it did work, that means we wouldn't have to work anymore. We could just print money and everybody would be happy, and the world will always take our dollars. It's not going to happen. Well, and we of course, might be seeing the beginning of the end right now. Of course, Wall Street loves it. The banks love it because they get free money. But the Fed's mandate is not to pump up Wall Street. The Fed's mandate is to, is to pump up the economy itself, which, as we heard from Ben Bernanke, is getting weaker. Right despite all this money printing of the past. 
so he's not achieving what his goal is. If he says that's his goal, and he doesn't, he's not designed to prop up Wall Street, but he keeps propping up Wall Street, and he doesn't create any jobs. It proves that economic planning through manipulation of money and credit doesn't work. It creates the bubbles, it creates the problems, so you can't solve this problem by doing more of the same. So someday we have to wake up and challenge this whole concept of central economic planning through uh, central banking, as well as Keynesian economics, that we should have intervention in the economy, because uh, we're witnessing the failure of that whole system of economic policy. Well, he doesn't think it's a failure. Here's what he said in his Jackson Hole speech back in August. He said, quote, central bank security purchases have provided meaningful support to the economic recovery while mitigating deflationary risks, to which you would say? Unemployment's still up. He complain he's complaining about the unemployment. And uh, the standard of living has not gone up. The standard of living goes down. He de declared today that he doesn't really want, he doesn't work to have inflation. But the truth is, he's practically praying for inflation so he can liquidate some debt. This debt cannot be paid. You either default, which we won't, we'll keep paying the bills, but you've got to pay back with something cheaper, and that's why they want to liquidate debt through inflation, and that's what they're waiting on. And he believes in his own mind that, boy, if we only get inflation going and start liquidating debt, we'll get back on our feet again, and I'll stop the inflation when I have to. But believe me, if he hasn't been controlling it for the last five years, it, when the inflation even gets you know, more accelerated, he does not have right. control over it, and he won't admit it. By the way, our own Peter Barnes asked him a question that is, is bothering a lot of people, the suggestion that, in fact, he may be trying to re-elect President Obama because uh, uh, Mitt Romney has said if he's elected president, he would not reappoint Ben Bernanke and people who think like him. Uh, do you think that Ben Bernanke is taking sides in this election? You know, I'm a, I'm a cynic, and I don't like central banking. I don't uh, jump at chances to bash Bernanke. So I sort of would uh, say that he's probably more worried about his reputation. And I think he really honestly wants to prove that his economic theories work because he put a lifetime into it. Just think of much time and effort he put into studying the Depression. I mean, if I'm right and he's wrong, it's destroyed his whole thesis of the last 30 or 40 years. So I think he thinks more about that than he does about whether he gets reappointed. He wants yeah. to be proven right on these issues. I think he's truly an academician rather than a, uh, a party player and he's only doing this for uh, Obama. The, but there is a history that Federal Reserve chairmen have in the past tried to accommodate the president. It has happened power. a couple of times. Congressman, I have to go, but just a one word answer. Are you ever going to endorse Mitt Romney for president? Probably not. Well, those are two words, but succinct. Thank you very much. Congressman Ron Paul, <laughs> good to see you. Thank you.